PNG and China mark 40 years of diplomatic relations. Private sector continue to urge government intervention. And Kandep recount to continue. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thank you for joining me for Wednesday's news. 40 years of bilateral relations between PNG and China was celebrated with the official handing over of the International Convention Center. As China's biggest grant aid project in the Pacific, the Convention Center will be used to host the 2018 APEC Summit. The Prime Minister Peter O'Neill was not able to attend the event, but that did not dampen spirits. Chinese Ambassador Li Ruyo described the milestone as mature. China and PNG have enjoyed fast progress in bilateral trade. The volume reached 2,700 million or 2.7 billion US dollars in 2015, a growth of 12.4 times compared to the year 2000. He said PNG has become the largest recipient of Chinese direct investments in the Pacific, which totaled nearly 5 million US dollars. Some of those investments include the Ramu Nicol Mine and the Wharf and Four Lane Highway in Lei. Ambassador Ruyo said the International Convention Center is China's biggest grant aid project in the Pacific so far. It cost 60 million kina. Standing in for the Prime Minister was Minister for Sports Justin Tachenko, who announced the malaria eradication program. China, we aim to reduce malaria in project areas by 95%. Working together, we deliver the Papua New Guinea Malaria Elimination Action Plan over three years. Thank you, China. A part of the PNG-China relation that is gaining momentum and interest in PNG is the education opportunities that is available in China for Papua New Guineans. Lillian Andala went to China under the scholarship. Yeah, I did my bachelor's in oil and gas uh, in East China, East China University of Science and Technology, and I'm continuing with master's in chemical engineering and technology as well. So I'm under, um, I did my bachelor's degree under Chinese government scholarship, and my master's is in Shanghai government scholarship, under Shanghai government scholarship. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. The PNG Power Board will be asking the government to reinvest its profits into rehabilitating its aging equipment. One of its main aims is to alleviate blackouts. The company's regional and center managers were all in Port Mosby today, attending their three-day 2016 Managers Conference. All of PNG Power's group and center asset managers, Senior regional managers and executive managers have gathered in Port Mosby to attend the PNG Power Managers Conference, focusing on identifying and overcoming business challenges. Although invited Minister for Public Enterprise and State Investments William Duma did not attend due to other engagements. In his absence, PNG Power Board Chairman Andrew Ogil gave an insight into the board's activities and decisions made since being formed in March this year. He said 2015 was a good year despite many challenges. The company even recorded a profit of 63 million kina. PNG Power needs to invest, reinvest into some of our aging equipment. And I know that sometimes some of this aging equipment has ended our advancement. So this is the precision the board will take. We will communicate appropriately to the authorities that this profits that we make will go back into investing into PNG Power. The board is working on a number of plans, including reintroducing the home ownership scheme and encouraging staff training. With these developments, the chairman also warned that the board is serious about clearing the negativity that has tarnished the reputation of the company in the past. But for PNG Power, I'd like us to make a difference. 
So please, when you go back, relay this message. This is our position. This board would not tolerate corruption. Chief Executive Officer Chris Bai said PNG Power is striving to meet the government's vision of providing access to electricity to 70% of the country's population by 2030. Some of these major projects we're going to do it alone. And rolling out the electricity to 70% of the population, we, PPL, cannot do it alone. We need support. And who can do it better? Who, uh, what organization can do it better uh, or assist us better do that? And that's the private sector. They have the money, they have got the knowledge, they have the know-how. So we need to actively engage with them. The chairman also announced that the board is committed to put in a good management and assured the management of its support as far as the good of the company goes. Deli Waigeno, National MTV News. The private sector is continuing to urge the government to put measures in place to curb government spending. Over the past months, the private sector has expressed their concerns about the state of the economic and the persistent pressures on foreign currency. Papua New Guinea, like the rest of the world, has been plagued with external factors affecting economic growth. Also, a drastic drop in global commodity prices, slow growth in China and Brexit have proved to be unfavorable hurdles. This morning at a business breakfast hosted by the Business Council of PNG, the private sector was given an outlook of the country's economy over the coming months. The slowdown in the economy has been quite noticeable, with the private sector feeling the brunt of the pinch, especially when dealing with the lack of foreign exchange. Michael Penrose, Business Council Vice President, when addressing the audience, gave some examples of clear indicators of the economic strain. Indications coming out from Pricewaterhouse, KPMG and Deloitte is that most of their bigger clients are probably down on average about 35% against the same period last year which is quite significant, you know, when you put it in the context of, um, you know, where we are at the moment. Um, I suppose it goes without saying that you can imagine what the smaller to medium-sized businesses are probably experiencing. There are the, the levels of decline they're probably experiencing. Um, the other key probably indicator that um, in our last recent consultative um, session that we had, um, some of the data coming through from BSB was that FPOS transactions for the last three quarters are down about 9%. So probably giving another indi indicator in terms of uh, consumer, uh, consumer sentiment at the moment. Despite the negative picture painted of the coming months, business houses remain committed to finding solutions during these tough times. Hard decisions need to be made about stopping things that are actually being funded at the moment. Um, stopping things that are not yet funded, as in not making promises to spend, is a much easier political outcome than actually trying to stop something that people already have uh, in their pocket or a job that's already created. According to the Department of Treasury, gradual consolidation will return the economy to a fiscal sustainable path, maintaining debt to GDP at a sustainable level and return to a balanced budget by 2020. Making sure we provide, government provides that enabling environment, in, uh, continue to invest in infrastructure and of course look at the uh, the enabling regulatory environment that try to support the, uh, the growth of the uh, private sector, obviously we all know is the engine of uh, growth. Although the medium term outlook for PNG's economy plans for modest increases in revenue and expenditure until 2020, according to the Asian Development Bank, forward revenue projections may not be realistic without the fiscal consolidation the government has committed to, which may result in PNG likely to miss its fiscal targets. Leon Gerari, National MTV News. Lay police have confirmed that two suspects involved in an armed robbery and a subsequent shootout with police last Monday died of injuries they sustained. Lay Metropolitan Commander Chief Superintendent Anthony Wagambi said the two were part of the gang that opened fire at police at West Araka when they were pursued. The police vehicle was hit when the criminals fired back at them, the suspect of mixed Morbe and Milnbe. Police believe the two separate robberies at Pelgan Supermarket and Lay International Hotel were well planned and executed by other people who were not physically present during the crimes. Wagambi said they continue to exercise restraint in the use of firearms, but they will not hesitate to shoot back when being fired upon. 
Mugambi warns criminals that police will deal decisively with them and armed criminals will be taken down if they pose an immediate threat to police personnel or the public. The recounting of the Kande seat will continue per the Supreme Court's decision on September 6. Justice Alan David has refused two applications filed by Kandep MP Don Polier this afternoon. The applications were to stay the recount and to relook at the decision made on the 6th of September. Justice Alan David ruled that the leave application for the hearing of the sleep rule application be refused. He said the application have no strong case of success. This means that the stay application and the sleep rule application have no use. Polier applied for the stay pending the hearing of the sleep rule application after a three-man Supreme Court bench ordered for the recounting of all the ballot boxes. His argument was that the National Court had ordered for the recounting of five ballot boxes which were put aside by the Electoral Commission when Polia had reached the absolute majority in 2012. However, when the matter was brought to the three-man Supreme Court bench, Polier argued that there was no interest of justice in ordering for the recounting of all the boxes. The recounting will continue as normal starting today. Vasanata Yama, National MTV News. Among stories making headlines, cancer knowledge lacking. Stay with us for details. Welcome back. UPNG's National Academic Staff Association and the UPNG administration have resolved to work together to pursue the 7.5% owed to national staff or face industrial action. The National Academic Staff Association met with the Vice Chancellor at midday today to discuss various contentious issues which included the 7.5% outstanding back payment. Meeting the press after the closed-door meeting, Association President Emmanuel Gorea said the other matters they discussed were housing, security and the university's revised calendar. So, uh, uh, you know, collaborating together as a team, working together, um, but uh, in terms of trying to get what we want, uh, we, didn't, we were not that pleased. But as a team, way forward, I think I'm very pleased with that. With the housing issue, President Gorea said the Vice Chancellor has resolved to appoint a committee to look into the matter. One of the commitments also he made was uh, uh, he's throwing back the housing scheme program back to NASA. In other words, NASA will become responsible for uh, sorting out the housing scheme and finding a, a way forward. As for the revised university calendar, they did not reach a firm resolution and their issues with the increased security check is something the university will not budge on. However, while both the Vice Chancellor and Gorea are pleased that talks have officially begun between the association and the administration on these issues, Gorea said September 30th is the deadline on the 7.5% back payment. Printed on the agenda for today's meeting, failure to meet the deadline could result in the resumption of second semester could be jeopardized, possible boycott of examination, and possible industrial action as a final action for the claim. I think the Vice Chancellor mentioned that we have pursued every administrative process, due process that we like to pursue. Uh, we went up to the highest authority and he informed the staff today that he even went to the Prime Minister to inform the Prime Minister about the 7.5, so it's now. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. Lay Metropolitan Commander Anthony Wagambi Jr. says there was no string of robberies on Monday. Only Plum Trade was robbed. It was reported that three companies got robbed, but Lay's Police Criminal Investigation Division has confirmed that there was only one robbery. Chief Superintendent Wagambi Jr. confirmed that Anderson's Foodland was broken into on Sunday morning. There was no holdup at the supermarket. Bethany Harriman with this report. The Lay Police have begun investigations into the plum trade holdup that happened on Monday when three armed men stole an undisclosed amount of money. 
While the investigations have begun, lay police have rejected claims that there was two other holdups on the same day. The Metropolitan Commander Anthony Wagambi Jr. says that the lay police have visited the three companies mentioned in the media reports and the only company robbed was Plum Trade. The two other companies mentioned was Brigstone and Lay Plumbers and Builders. Yesterday, Deputy Opposition Leader Sam Basil expressed concerns about the holdups when Plum Trade's management told him in the morning. In the early hours of Monday morning, Anderson's Foodland was broken into and robbed. Police say a security guard was involved. Last week, Pelgins and the Lay International Hotel were robbed. Chief Superintendent Anthony Wagambi Jr. has called on business houses to let police know of their banking so that police units patrolling can keep an eye when security firms are carrying out the transfers. He also called for members of parliament in Morobe to address social issues so that it can minimize the amount of crime happening in the province. Bethany Hariman, National MTV News, Lei. A non-government organization dealing with TB cases in the central province says an apparent breakdown in administering drugs to TB patients has resulted in an increase of multi-drug resistant TB cases. Senior Child Fund Health Officer Olive Oa told MTV News that statistics indicate there has been a rise in MDR-TB. The organization is now working with authorities to train volunteers to help people identify TB patients and help them complete their medication. More and more multi-drug resistant TB cases have been identified and reported in parts of central province. For most communities, MDR cases are left unattended and may lead to death. The workshop facilitated by Child Fund PNG is an effort to train volunteers who are village-based to act as monitoring mechanism so TB patients complete their medication. What they learn here in the training is about the basic facts of TB, which is what is TB, how it's spread, what the patient should do to prevent himself or herself from um, infecting others, and what the treatment supporters should do to the patient. The participants are from the Karuku district. These volunteers now have a huge task to help minimize and stop the spread of TB in the communities. Avia Roy is one of the participants who lost a husband and a son after contracting TB. She is one of the many participants who believe more awareness and knowledge of identifying TB will be the key factors in ending the killer disease. Me like go back and help him or place line blow me. Lo how or sick line lo hap on us drink marasin blow all now. On us hari mol medical or doctor blow all how all by kissing dose blow all. This la all no sa make him say me come walk in sla training lo go back help him all good na kissing all dose blow all. Not only Karuku district is seeing the spread of tuberculosis. Other districts in Central have similar statistics or much worse. Child Fund PNG has trained 60 volunteers and aims for a similar training in other parts of Central Province. Patient, almost uh, some update law, uh, one and all, uh, treatment, uh, dose blow, all same now, some dislike of working problems. So, volunteer must involve this law too. Some best way long, the blow. Volunteers look at him, by plug and help him all. Uh, the three-day training workshop ended today. Jack Lapava, Jr. National, MTV News. Papua New Guinea has removed the ban on visa on arrival for Australian passport holders. Minister for Foreign Affairs and Immigration, Rimbing Pato, made the announcement today, saying the removal of the ban was approved by the National Executive Council. Minister Pato said this is for Australian passport holders travelling to PNG for tourism purposes only. He said this is to encourage more Australian tourists to visit PNG. And they will be so entitled on that basis to uh, uh, arrive and obtain visas at Jackson's Airport, uh, Gurney Airport, uh, Mount Hagen Airport, and I think at uh, Toko Airport uh, in Hobao in East New Britain. And uh, of course, uh, we are working through those issues on visas for Papua New Guinea uh, citizens. Uh, and uh, Prime Minister 
has discussed this and I've also discussed it with the uh, Australian Prime Minister and the Australian Foreign Minister as well as the New Zealand Prime Minister and the New Zealand Foreign Minister. So I'll be following on those discussions uh, in the meetings in early uh, October as well. A survey conducted by the Papua New Guinea Cancer Foundation has revealed the lack of knowledge on this killer disease among fellow citizens of this country. The survey conducted in three centers signals the important importance for more awareness and advocacy. Today, the Pink Ribbon Brunch was launched to begin the Women's Cancer Awareness Month, which is October. Lorraine Gabina reports. Recent statistics from Global Can states two women every day die from cervical cancer. 99% of breast cancer occurs in women and 1% in men. Another research by the PNG Institute of Medical Research states that cancer is the leading cause of death in Papua New Guinea, followed by pneumonia and tuberculosis. The PNG Cancer Foundation today announced the Pink Ribbon Brunch to be hosted on October 28th in Port Moresby. At the launching today, National Finance Limited sales manager John Dickinson urged other business houses to join in the fight against cancer by attending next month's fundraiser. Lorraine Gabina, National MTV News. And now looking at our finance news, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.3155 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.3080 US dollars, 0.3987 Australian dollars, 0.2715 Euro and 30.57 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, Gold and copper closed lower, while coffee and cocoa closed the day higher. Crude oil closed higher, while palm oil and copper closed the day lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 133.47 points higher, the ASX is trading at 2.11 points higher, and the Allodinaris is trading at 2.5 points higher. Police partnering to address law and order in Medang lay that with more others when we return. Welcome back to the news. JICA and the National Education Department will soon release new maths and science curriculum books to improve education in the country. Curriculum Development Division Assistant Secretary Stephen Tandale revealed today that schools are experiencing low results in these two subjects. Materials produced will be based from the EquiTV Education TV program aired on MTV. The EquiTV is a significant resource used in delivering education materials in the country. The Education Department will be converting EquiTV into textbook edition on science and math subjects. TV it was a bit problem because so many, many of our schools were in the remote setting. Many of our schools didn't have the electricity. Many of our schools were not able to see the, you know, the TV. Yeah. Huh? And then so we were saying, it's happening, but it was happening for those who had the power and those who had the TV and those who were able to watch and then uh, watch our teachers teaching and then uh, learn from there. But with the textbook that now we are now uh, into uh, what the vehicle has come to assist this one, it is very significant because the textbook we will deliver to the length and the breadth of Papua New Guinea. JICA senior representative Shujo Yoshihiko says through seriousness, Better education will be achieved, which will take time to develop. These books will be made available by 2020. This goal, it may take time, maybe several years we need to wait to see the result. But we believe, Jacob believes, that because of the firm uh, the seriousness and enthusiasm of the Department of Education, the better, better education for kids will be achieved through this project. JICA has been a long developing partner with the National Education Department and this morning a car was presented to the Curriculum Division Department. 
Melindia Kutam, National MTV News. Communities from Lea Lea, Poribada, Boira and Papa in Central Province gathered this week to witness the launch of a training manual designed to make the management of schools more effective. The training manual, developed following consultation with representatives from these four villages, aims to promote transparency and accountability by school boards of management. It is thought to be very, the very first homegrown manual of its kind, with PNG LNG project developer Exxon Mobil supporting this initiative. The development of the training manual for School Board of Management had been identified as a need for communities within the PNG LNG plant site impacted area. ESMI Sinapa Consultancy Services was engaged by ExxonMobil to spearhead the development of the training modules and according to its director, ESMI Sinapa, the response from communities was positive with members of school boards eager to share their experiences. In May last year, we had a uh, what we call a best DOT training in Edgewood in Barocco. And about 30 people from Papa, Lele, Boira, and, um, don't tell me, Boira, we attended the DOT. Model 4, Good Governance. While the manual was developed specifically for schools within the PNG LNG project areas, it has been presented to the Central Provincial Division of Education to use in other schools within the province. Ultimately, our vision is to see it across the country, right? And, and I, really, I really wish the Central Provincial Administration well in that. The BOM training manual complements the PNG National Education Department's manual for Boards of Management Handbook for elementary, primary and community schools with a specific focus on upskilling leadership and governance qualities of Board of Management members. And so congratulations to the four, four communities and those 19 first people who went in. And I believe those were the ones that has kick-started. Their commitment and dedication, they never gave up, irrespective of there was allowance or no cup of coffee. But they continue to remain at Edswood to continue that. Mary Botulo, National MTV News. East New Britain Market Authority has expressed satisfaction on what's been described as a step in the right direction to invite farmers and producers from the Highlands region to supply fresh vegetables and fruits to consumers in the province. This follows a MOA signed between the East New Britain Market Authority and the Fresh Produce Development Agency. ENB Market Authority Manager Herman Valvalu says the partnership between them and Fresh Produce Development Agency has paved way to address the extension and development needs in horticulture production and marketing of fresh produce in East New Britain. The agreement has started off with two containers of bulb onions freighted from the Highlands via Ley early this month. This is one of the milestones taken by the Market Authority to meet the growing demand of varieties of fresh produce sold at the local market. People must be the focus of service delivery. This was the take-home message from public civil servants at the Provincial and Local Level Service Monitoring Authority Conference for Provincial Administrators. Chief Secretary Isaac Lupari said the national government is trying to connect people from rural areas who have been neglected service. Lupari says lack of money shouldn't become an excuse for a lack of management because Waigani is no longer managing funds. Sections of Sogeri National Highway from Border Village to Sirinumo Dam at Sogeri need urgent maintenance. Villagers said the deteriorating road condition is a major impediment to accessing government services. This is the worsening state of the Sogeri Road from Border Village to major government water supply and power establishment, the Sirinumo Dam. During rainy seasons, potholes with puddles one after the other often result in vehicles getting bogged. A small man or them too, they normally have problems you know, when they come down. Because time low and dry seasons, I'm good. But wet season, sorry to do. I got a car, it's a bog, bog long half now, you know. And some place I can time through long here. With this deteriorating road condition, PMVs often deny traveling this route. Villagers, especially women wanting to transport their produce to the market, often walk to Sogari Station. 
one in pumpkins blow me, and I come wait him car, go, go, nine, eleven o'clock now. Now, me like Karim, now walk about on Sogari Market, and me, me stop little long here. Yeah. For those living further up the Sirinu Mudem, health and education services has been a problem. They said pregnant mothers due for antenatal services often delivering buses in school children affected. Time more mangi also facing problem no. Go school no. So getting about also walk about. Some time all mama also transport them one mm. All by also one mm. But one mm bony more picking in no inside the bus no here or. With these challenges, they are now calling for immediate intervention from the government, local MP and authority concerned to fix the road. This is the road too, I must mean, I want to feed the road, or one of them, I want to something, national road from most we go on one of them. So we need a bit of right up there. Erika Rupma, National MTV News. The Demographic and Health Survey participants are preparing to move out to the nine districts of Morbi province. Forty participants who have undergone a two-week training are now qualified to carry out the survey as interviewers and supervisors. They will be out in the districts for three months starting next month. These health workers are now qualified to represent Morbi province in a Demographic and Health Survey. They are preparing to leave for the nine districts, which include Bulolo, Kabum, and Menyamia. One of the objectives of the survey is to provide to the Departments of Health and Planning updated population and health data. The health survey is very, very important to collect the vital statistics for health. It is mainly related to health. These 40 health officers took part in three days practical on demographic and health survey in Lay District which qualified them to carry out the actual survey. When coordinating the survey in the districts, the interviewers and supervisors will ask three sets of questions. This will include questions on household and separate questions to male and female individuals. Only clear or one or something, just a few errors where only take it time if like the demographic health survey interviewers together with their supervisors are now waiting for the National Statistics Office for further arrangements to carry out the survey. The actual survey will take up to three months before completion. Okudaroa, an officer from the National Statistics Office, calls on the NSO to make available resources on time. I appeal that National Statistical Office should be right behind this operation. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. In news ahead, we bring you some sporting highlights in Chukai Sports. Don't go away. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. Now in football, PNG's under-20 goalkeeper Lavina Hola is among the newest batch of the country's future international players. And the young woman is hoping that her commitment and dedication to the national team will earn her a spot for the Women's World Cup in just under two months' time. In 2010, she made her first appearance in the red, black and gold Travelling to Auckland, New Zealand as part of the under-15 PNG squad. Two years after that, in 2012, she made her way into the senior national team. That same year, travelling again to New Zealand with the under-17 side. And in 2014, she again represented the country, this time with the under-20s. She did not, however, feature during PNG's triumph in their 1-0 victory over New Caledonia during the Pacific Games. Actually, I follow my mom around in the soccer pitch and I asked my mom that I can play and my mom said no because I was too young to play. But my auntie asked my mom if I can play. So I started playing soccer. The feeling of excitement overwhelming when she learned of her selection into the current other 20 squad. I was so surprised that they put my name on the newspaper 
I was so surprised and I was so excited because it's my first um, international trip down to Auckland. While she began her career as an outfield player, the choice of goalkeeper made by head coach Lisa Cole. Coach Lisa asked me to change my position because of my speed. I normally play backline, but because of my speed, I cannot run faster because um, the other teams going to come and play against us. They are going to be tall and fast, so they can just easily beat me, use my side and beat me. So he asked me to change my position to play a goalkeeper, and I tried and I succeeded into the goalkeeper. Papua New Guinea has been placed in Pool A alongside Brazil, Sweden, and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, all of whom would provide exceedingly difficult challenges. Jeremy Mogi, National MTV Sports. More of the interview with Lavina Hola will be on tonight's episode of Football First at 7.30 p.m. The Under-18 National Basketball Championship started today at the Tarama Aquatic Center here in the nation's capital. The four-day tournament will end on Saturday when a squad will be named as well to take in the Under-18 Oceania Championship. Denimos Raiko reports. For the first time, Basketball PNG is hosting the Under-18 National Championship, a total of 18 teams participating, 11 men's and 7 women's. The teams come from Central, Kupiano, Daru, Palm Men's and Women's League, Kerama, Simbu and Host NCD Basketball Association. Not all provinces turned up for the tournament. The teams present are expected to play high standard basketball. So all of our um, all of our associations are affiliated with PM, PNG Basketball. So uh, it has been a bit of a process to get everyone here. But you know, when you run tournaments like this, it's never easy. Um, but um, yeah, look, we we're very happy that we've been able to to get this many teams come through, um, and it's, and looking forward to a really good event. Today, the championship started off with round robin matches. The men's are playing in pool A and B, while the women's play in one pool. With the Under-18 Oceania Championships coming up in December in Fiji, Basketball PNG is making selections from these championships. Dini Rose Raiko, National MTV Sports. PNG to host the 2018 Under-15 Basketball Championships. That's, that's next on Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports. Welcome back to Chukai Sports. The International Basketball Federation Board has announced three countries as hosts for the Oceania Youth Championships for both men and women for 2017, 2018 and 2019. Guam hosts the 2017 Youth Championships. PNG will host the 2018 Under-15 Championships in Port Mosby, while New Caledonia will stage the 2019 Youth Championships. The International Basketball Federation Oceania Board recently announced that Papua New Guinea will play host to the 2018 Under-15 Basketball Championships to be played in Port Moresby. In an interview today with MTV Sports, PNG Basketball Executive Officer Joel Kalu said more focus will be given to the Under-15 squad come 2018, but between now and then it will be a lengthy process to select a side, which means trials and clinics will be carried out in order to select the best side. We're uh, you know, very excited that we have the ability to host the, the Under-15 Oceania Championships. Um, it won't be till 2018, so we've got a couple of years up our sleeve to plan, but um, yeah, look, it's just recognition, I think, of the great work that's happening here and, um, you know, for FIBA to, to trust, you know, us that, uh, to have that championships. So I think, you know, following, especially on the success of the, the Pacific Games last year, um, is, is a credit to the Federation and the people involved in the sport. FIBA Executive Director of Oceania, David Crocker, said basketball PNG is rapidly gaining momentum after the successful hosting of the 2015 Pacific Games. FIBA is very enthusiastic about retaining in 2018, especially when the country has world-class facilities and with excellent group of people driving the federation. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we're, our plan next year will be to have both under-15 and under-17 national championships. So we want to get the best of the best playing against each other. Um, you know, we also want to get out to the affiliated associations throughout the country and make sure we're doing development work with not only players, but coaches, referees, officials, um, you know, as part of our federation and our strategic plan. Uh, we want to grow the game and that's not just the players but everyone involved and then 2018 we'll, we'll shift our focus to the under 15 so um, there's lots to be done uh, but we're excited about you know everything that we can achieve 
Kwal Papua New Guinea prepares to host the 2018 Under-15 Championships, Guam is already in preparations to host the next year's Under-17 Oceania Championships and New Caledonia to host the 2019 Under-17 Oceania Championships. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. The Export Rugby 7 Series is set for a blockbuster this weekend in Leh, Marbe Province. Marbe Province will host the third leg of the series after the Dawapia 7s in Rubal and the Tulite Series in Goroka. The Stallions won the Dawapia 7 Series in Rubal, while Harlequins were crowned champions in Goroka. Both teams have now secured a spot in the National Provincial Championships, which will be held in Port Mosby on the 15th and 16th of October. After the Saravagat 7 series in Leh, the final leg is the Hetura 7 series which will be held in Port Mosby. The four winners from the different series gain automatic entry into the National Provincial Championships. Different provinces have been invited and have shown interest in taking part in the NPC next month. A women's competition will also be held during the National Provincial Championships. Elijah Lavette, National MTV Sports. Real Madrid coach Zinedine Zidane denied on Monday there was a rift between him and Cristiano Ronaldo after the team's talisman appeared to react angrily to being substituted in Saturday's two-all draw at Las Palmas. Ronaldo's response to being taken off in the 72nd minute of the game has been the subject of much attention in the Spanish media. In the build-up to Tuesday's heavyweight Champions League clash with Bo Russia Dortmund. Ronaldo, the all-time top scorer in the competition with 94 goals, has struggled to regain fitness and form since limping off in the Euro 2016 final with a knee injury. Teammate Tony Cruz told reporters that even the very best players can have off days, and the substitution was no drama. It is fast unmöglich that one player in a season 60 Spiele macht and die alle durchspielt. Um, Jeder, jeder hat mal einen besseren, mal einen schlechteren Tag, das ist, das ist völlig normal und dann entscheidet der Trainer eben, wer wann äh, spielt oder dann eben auch mal 15 Minuten vorm Spielende rausgenommen wird. Das ist, glaube ich, für alle kein Drama und ähm, ja, er hat sich ganz normal wie vor, vor dem Spiel auch, äh, wie er sich immer in die Gruppe integriert und äh, ist, glaube ich, äh, the European champions had to meet a rampage in Borussia Dortmund in a frazzled state, with a buoyant start to the season having been punctured by successive La Liga draws. Real head coach Zinedine Zidane acknowledged that it will be a tough test. Todo normal. Y, uh, y luego el enfado de Cristiano es, sabe, no es no solo Cristiano. Yo creo que todos los jugadores que cuando sale del campo están Eleven times European champions, Real have a dismal record in Germany, having won four out of 30 competitive games in the country and have lost their last three visits to Dortmund. Jeremy Mogi, National MTV Sports. That's a wrap for Trukai Sports. Weather details when we come back. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Looking at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region, a shower or two in Port Mosby and Popondetta. Mostly fine in Daru and Alatau, and thundery showers in Kerma. In the Mumasi region, rain showers in Leh, showers with possible thunderstorms in Medang, and showers in Wewak and Vanimo. In the islands region, fine with a shower or two in Lorengau, Kokopo, Rubal, and Buka, thundery showers in Kaviang, and fine weather in Kimbe. And in the highlands region, cloudy light rain showers in all centers. Forecast for small ships for the next 24 hours. 
waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru, to Kiwa Island to Kerma, to Yul Island to Hood Point, to Samurai Island with waters of eastern and western Melembe Islands with waters of Samurai Island to Cape Vogel, to Vinchafen and with waters of Vinchafen through Vitia Strait, Siasi Islands to Long Island, seas of 1.5 to 2 meters. Waters of Medang to Karkar Island, to Bogia to Wiwek, to Aitape to Vanimo and northern PNG Indonesian border and with waters of Manus and its western group of islands, seas of 0.5 to 1.3 meters. And waters of New Island to New Britain to Bougainville, seas of 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Ocean forecast for PNG areas in the Coral Sea, seas moderate to rather rough with southeast winds at 15 to 25 knots with gusts. In the Solomon Sea, seas moderate with southeast winds at 15 to 20 knots. In the Bismarck Sea, seas slight with southeast winds at 10 to 15 knots with gusts. And in the Pacific Ocean, seas slight with east to southeast winds at 10 to 15 knots with gusts. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. Before we go, a look at our stories making headlines. PNG in China make 40 years of diplomatic relations. Private sector continue to urge government intervention and Kandep recount to continue. That's been the news for today, this Wednesday, the 28th of September 2016. From the entire news team, pleasant viewing. It's bye for now.